Hey there everyone, it's Daikaiju Tony here, and I would like to thank our sponsor, Cosmic Comics, where you can buy comics, toys, statues, board games, G Fuel, a lot of good stuff here. Yep, and feel free to ask any of our employees if you need help finding anything. This place is the jewel of the Mojave Desert. So, I would like to talk about a comic run that started in 2018 and somewhat ended recently. It's just that the writer changed, but the numbers is still continuing from continuing from what started in 2018. I'm talking about Nick Spencer's The Amazing Spider-Man. Now, for a little rundown of what happened before this run, basically for the longest time, Dan Slott was writing Spider-Man, and a lot of stuff was hit or miss. Some stuff was cool. A lot of stuff was pretty out of character for Peter Parker. Like, it's like the whole... It's like if... The whole if great power, great responsibility model was like thrown away. Um, although I did like the end of Red Goblin because it actually. Yeah, slot sucks. Yeah, well, Red Goblin was a clever idea, despite um, the repercussions of it not really being that big towards the end. Yeah, uh, without spoiling too much, but to get into Nick Spencer's Amazing Spider-Man. It's a mixed bag. Like, it starts out really good, but then the main narrative really dragged. Um, <laughs> so, within the first few issues, Peter Parker, he's self-aware that he's been out of character for a while. As a matter of fact, there's a whole story arc where he gets separated by a sci-fi laser. He, he gets separated into two beings, Peter Parker and Spider-Man, and Spider-Man is an absolute douche. And he even goes on to say, who's Uncle Ben? And Peter realizes that he needs to be a part of Spider-Man in order for the character to work. And yeah, from on, from on then, um, Peter um, encounters, uh, what's his name? Kindred, which is the ongoing villain of Nick Spencer's story. And Kindred, it's a hit or miss thing, but I'll get into that later. Um, he, aside the Kindred uh, arc, which is the main arc, some of the story arcs that Spider-Man goes through is pretty interesting, and it doesn't really develop Peter Parker as much as more towards it develops all of Peter Parker's friends and side characters. For example, Felicia Hardy. She is no longer a pretty hateful and despicable person like the way Dan Slott wrote her. Um, or Kevin Smith. Yes, or Kevin Smith. Um, Smith Boomerang, I could... I could I can easily tell that Boomerang must have been Nick Spencer's character to write because he was probably the funniest character in Superior Foes of Spider-Man. And basically, Boomerang comes out as your roommate that's annoying, but at the same time, he's a cool guy to be with. Um, see, the thing is, Peter Parker doesn't get a lot of development, and to, uh, with the exception of like key issues, but... Almost everyone else does, like J. Jonah Jameson. He has some of the best uh, character development put towards him because um, the issues dedicated to J. Jonah Jameson, it's practically a parody of BuzzFeed and a bunch of other news articles you see today. And it's J. Jonah Jameson realizing how much of a prick he was towards Peter Parker when Peter Parker was like 16. It's like, oh yeah, we basically have freelance reporters write uh, bullcrap articles and make rumors and all that. And J. Jones James, and he's just like flashing back to all the things he'd say about Spider-Man because somewhat spoiler alert at this point, J. Jones Jameson, he knows that Peter Parker's Spider-Man and he supports that. But he still has his own antics like the support that he, the support that Peter Parker's Spider-Man, he wrote a whole article about how Captain America is still with Hydra. Like, oh, and Spider-Man, stop Captain America. <laughs> yeah. But on to the somewhat negatives. Peter Parker, he does get one issue that basically flat out says that he's going to try improving as a human being despite, you know, ma making some pretty horrific mistakes over, gosh, I want to say more than 10 years of history. But basically, this run teased that one more day would be reverted, which, without getting going into too much, one more day is the story arc where Peter made a deal with Mephisto, Rick and aborted his own daughter without knowing. <laughs> yep, Un undid his marriage with MJ, 
And I liked where it was going. Doctor Strange asked, why would Peter do such a out-of-character thing? And Mephisto was like, oh, you wouldn't believe some of the desperate things people would do. <laughs> and... But throughout the whole story, the main villain is Kindred. And basically, it's complicated. <laughs> Without going too much into it, he's like Harry Osborn reborn as a bad guy or something, and it doesn't really undo one more day, but instead it retcons sins past where Norman slept with Gwen Stacy and she gave birth to two evil goblin kids that aged fast. It, it, it was it, the ending was a mess. The, the the ending was a mess. Okay. However, um, the last issue, though, was pretty good because of what it did set up. Basically, the explanation on why Mephisto did one more day is because... And this is going to tie into our event that's going to happen soon in Marvel Comics, uh, Devil's Reign, I think. Basically, Mephisto's going to rage war on the human race, and the one person who stopped Mephisto is Spider-Man's daughter. That's why he aborted her in time. <laughs> okay, so they're, they're hinting that May Day might come back. And Peter might get all of his character development back. But the series ended on a somewhat meh note. Started good. Uh, what's going on right now is decent. But like with, whole, with the whole Ben Riley taking over the mantle, I hope that's good. But overall, Nick Spencer's run on Spider-Man was a... I want to... say it was a success? It was, but... Out of 10, I give it a 6.5. Wow. That's it. Daikoji Tony, signing out.